Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Mike from Dungeons and Diving. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of a, a brief intro to Ghidra, uh, which is a reverse engineering tool developed by the NSA. We're going to go ahead and follow suit with the Hello World program that I used in the Ida Pro video a couple days ago. Um, so the first step is you have to get Ghidra. Um, I'll drop the links for all these pages in the uh, description at the bottom. Uh, but ghidra-sre.org is where you get it from. So you're going to go ahead and click the download from GitHub. That'll take us to their GitHub page. Um, so you can grab either the uh, the zip or the tar file. If you're on Windows, it's really simple. Just grab the zip file. Once you grab that, you can't just directly use it. We actually have to go through the installation. You can click on the installation guide link here to bring up this page, or again, I'll drop it at the bottom. But the big thing is to make sure that you have the correct version of Java installed. So in order to grab the correct version of Java, um, there's a quick link right here. You can uh, click on the supported version of it. It'll bring you down here. You can either grab this Adoptium Temurin or Amazon Coretto, whatever you want, whichever version of it. And then just follow through the Java instructions here based on your system, whether you're on Windows or Linux and OS X. Uh, so once you have all that set up, basically the, the gist of it is you need to install the correct version of Java and then set the path variable to point to Java so that way when you run Ghidra it knows where to find Java to actually run the program for you. Once Java is installed and you have Ghidra unpacked, you're gonna see a folder like this on the left hand side. On the right hand side I've got some some test binaries for these tutorials. On Windows, since that's what I'm running, all you need to do is just double click on the Ghidra run batch file. On Linux, you're gonna use the, uh, the shell script there. So, run Ghidra, it opens up terminal, you'll see the splash screen, and you'll get this new window here. So you're gonna click on file, new project. Uh, you can create a non-shared or shared project if you're just working on your own, just use non-shared. Click Next. Find the directory here that you want to work in. Give it a name, and then click Finish. I've already created one called Tutorials, so I hit Cancel. Uh, but that's going to be wherever you want to store these on your drive. Um, the next step is we need to add applications to our Ghidra window here. And we're going to use this Hello World application. You can go and open them. Um, the easiest way is just drag and drop it in the window. Uh, it is a Linux compiled binary, so that's why it's, de it's detected that it is an ELF format. Uh, x86 little endian 64 bit. Um, and then you can just name it. Program name is Hello World right now. I'm going to leave it as is. But if you wanted to name it something else, you can change it right there. Uh, there's a bunch of options that you can look at here, but for this tutorial, we're just going to leave, leave the default set. It's going to do a very minimal amount of work to determine, you know, the processor type, uh, whether it's big or little Endian. Um, it can even detect which uh, compiler was used. In this case, GCC was used to compile this binary. And then that's it for setting it into the project. The next step is to actually run it. And you can do that by clicking on the little dragon icon or you can double click here. What you'll see now is that Hello World has not been analyzed. Would you like to analyze it now? Typically, you're going to want to do this, and there are a lot of different analysis tools that are embedded into Ghidra. It's typically, you can just go ahead and use the defaults, but if you wanted specific additional functionality, you can click those. For this project, it's unnecessary. We're going to click Analyze, and then I don't know if you saw it, but in the bottom right corner there is a progress bar that's blue. Uh, it's just such a small file that it happened almost instantaneously. Ignore the decompiler block on the right hand side. I'm going to actually close that for now. We'll come back to that later. I just don't want to uh, spoil the nice surprise. When we look on the left hand side, you can see the program tree is the different sections of the binary. Um, we're not going to get into those. What we're going to focus on here is the symbol tree section. Typically when I start I'm going to start in the functions because not all functions are exported and things. And we're going to see that export is going to be more handy when we're working with DLLs where we're sharing functionality from our, our code into other applications. Uh, but again, we're going to go back to the main functions. So the main entry point of a program 
is the start function. Uh, typically programmers, like I said in the other video, uh, we, we start writing in main, um, but going back to the start, uh, this is important to check out if you're looking at malware. For simple Hello World programs, it's not a big deal. But I'm going to go ahead and start with the start function anyways. You're going to see down here, it's going to load the effective address where our main function is into RDI. Then it's going to call libc start main and utilize that address as the parameter passed to it. Uh, we're not going to go and <laughs> try and reverse the C library. So we're just going to go ahead and jump to main. And then you can either uh, you can go to it here by double clicking on this main or you can just click on it down there inside of main We're going to see the prologue, which is these first two lines here uh, You're gonna see a push RBP, which is going to store our base pointer on the stack And that's important so that way when we return from our functionality the computer can rebuild the previous functions stack frame um, additionally, we're gonna see a move RBP RSP and what that's going to do is it's going to take the address of RSP, which is the top of the stack, and it's going to copy that into RBP. So that way our base pointer for our functionality is now at the same point as the top of our stack. If we were creating local variables inside of this function, you would see a modification to RSP as well. Uh, but because this function does not actually create any variables, we're not seeing anything there. Um, at the very bottom here, with this prologue, we're going to see the epilogue, which is a pop RBP, which will restore the RBP value that's on the stack, and it'll, it'll push it back into the RBP register. Uh, we don't see any difference with this uh, move uh, RBP RSP down here in the bottom, but if we had shifted RSP to account for however many bytes of local variable data we had, you would see that change as well. Uh, but again, we don't have that because there are no local variables. Additionally, if you were to look at some other compilers, some compilers would use a enter and leave statement instead of having those. And that's just a, that's just a, a single line instruction that does the same exact thing. So if you see that in the programming reverse engineering, no, no worries about that. That's all they're doing is your prologue and epilogue. All right, so the main functionality of this program that I wrote is in these couple of instructions here. Uh, the first the first is LEA RAX Hello World and this symbol right here was generated by Ghidra. If you looked at the Ida Pro version of this tutorial, it just used the letter S. And what this does is this is just a memory address and you can see that it's got the square brackets around that. That's a hint that it's memory address. Um, if you double click on that you will see that it takes us, actually didn't take us very far. Uh, it takes us right down here to this uh, 2004, uh, this uh, 00102004 address, which is just a storage of the letters, hello world. This puts the pointer to this address in RAX. The next line is a move instruction that takes the value of RAX, which again is the pointer, and it stores it in RDI. And the reason why we need it in RDI is because RDI is the first parameter passed to a function call in 64-bit assembly. So this RDI now contains this pointer and it is the first parameter of puts, which is going to just print hello world to the screen. Once we have this function call returning, our RX register is going to contain the return value of whatever the function was. In this case, puts, whatever puts returns is going to be stored in RAX. The next line down here, you see that we, we're moving hex zero into EAX, the lower 32 bits of RAX. All that's doing is it's zeroing it out. And the reason for that is because I have a return zero in my program that I wrote, and we'll see this in just a moment. So when our main function returns, um, I declared it as an int type. It returns zero as the integer value, and we have to populate that. So regardless of what puts return to us, we need to zero that out and return it back to the system. Ghidra is pretty well designed to be able to take your assembly code and try to convert it back into C. The problem is that sometimes it doesn't work, and most of the time it does, but I've spun many wasted cycles on trying to figure out code that it, it was a little bit confused on. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the decompiler back up. It's right here. And you can see it did not know what data type it was returning because you can return it as any data type. It's just the same bits. It's just how you're interpreting it. Um, it was an integer. It's going to do a puts hello world, which again correlates to this put statement here with the parameter hello world being in the RDI as the address for hello world, which is down there. And then it returns zero, which again, we had to populate EAX with hex zero and then return it. To show you how close it was, this is the code. Uh, just pulls stdio, calls our main function. We have printf hello world, interpreted as puts hello world, and then return zero. It actually pulled that one off exactly. That's the basics of reverse engineering a super simplistic hello world application in Ghidra. We started at the start function, followed it through main, worked through main, followed the address of our string that was printed to showing hello world, followed the call statement to puts, along with the parameter, which is that address, built up our return statement, and then finally returned to the system. We're going to wrap the video up here, but stay tuned for following tutorials where we examine something that's a little bit more in depth than a hello world application. The next video is going to focus on a binary that was obtained from Pico CTF, which is a capture the flag website. And the, the point of it is to do a little bit of reverse engineering and find what's called a flag. We're going to use Ghidra for that, but it is viable to continue using IDA if you're more familiar with that. Thanks for watching and happy hacking.